Slap it up and put it down, folks. This is your boy, Eddie Collins. Guys, this is Justin Brown. And we are meeting Popcorn back for the first time with our movie news and trivia reactions. We used to do these uh, episodes um, the, uh, before the strikes uh, for the writers, the WGA, as well mm-hmm. as the actors and SAG and stuff. If you're a new listener and you're like, what is this episode? Like, I, what is this in my my uh, my RSS feed? My ears. So what we do is uh, Justin and I talk about some recent uh, new developments in Holly Weird, as well as talk about movie trailers that we recently watched, whether they're for movies, uh, video games, or television shows. Um, and to kick us off with the movie news, um, director Travis Knight is circling new Masters of the Universe live action movie. Now, apparently, there's a very uh, successful Netflix TV show, uh, animated show for Masters of the Universe. Um, but Travis Knight, who uh, is known for um, best, uh, you know, uh, best hits like uh, stop motion films like Coraline, which is one of my personal favorites, mm-hmm. Kubo and the Two Strings, as well as, uh, you know, directing the live action uh, Transformers uh, spinoff Bumblebee, which I heard was quite good. Um, this film is going to be written uh, by Chris Butler, who was taking an initial draft from David Callahan, who I believe was one of the writers on Spider-Verse, oh, okay. on the Spider-Verse scripts. So I don't know what to make of this. I Those are some pretty solid films in this filmography from what I've heard. I mean, Kubo and the Two Strings, I think is really good, incredibly dark. Coraline is a personal favorite of mine. I actually really enjoy that movie. I watch it once a year around Halloween. Um, but Justin, have you seen any of those movies? Or- no, no, no. I, I- Okay. What about and and I wasn't a huge He Man fan. Me neither. I never got it. Yeah. I just know I have the power. That's all I know. And I think that's He Man. I don't even know that's for for sure him. Is that I not have him? The power of uh, Grayskull, or whatever. Yeah. Okay, that is him. Yeah. Though, right? yeah. Okay. And Ske- I, I, I Skeletor, know, right? Yeah. I, you know, <laughs> I mean, obviously the Skeletor memes. Oh, uh, okay. you know, are, yeah, yeah. are hilarious and everything, but like, yeah, I was never a big He Man uh, fan. It just like. Th- that whole thing just seemed kind of weird, uh, too weird for me. Like okay. I like my some of my uh, brothers watched it, yeah. but it was just never my thing. Yeah, I just never, I never got into it either. But apparently, there's a huge following for yeah, it. For and sure. So, you know, it is, you know, it is what it is. Uh, uh, clearly, they have a lot of confidence in it to still be doing an animated series that Kevin Smith runs for Netflix, and then trying to do a live action thing. Yeah, I think that sometimes that gets a little redundant. You know, like like with the whole Moana 2 announcement and then they're still doing a live action Moana with The Rock. I'm like, I feel like we're double dipping here, you guys. Like, yeah, yeah th- th- this seems du- stupid, but, you know, uh, maybe there's some people excited. If you're excited about uh, a He-Man live action film, give us a call, 347-508-0978. Tell us what you think. Um, next in our movie news is Knives Out 3 will reportedly start filming this year. Apparently, Ryan Johnson's uh, locking in the the draft for Knives Out 3, uh, which is still in its early stages, but deadline sets that it will begin filming this year, which means hopefully we'll begin some casting news within the next yeah. few months. What would be like a dream? Because we both have enjoyed the li- Knives Out films yeah. thus far. What would be uh, a dream cast or a cast member you would want in the next uh, want to go toe-to-toe with Daniel Craig's character? Oh, Detective man. Benoit Blanc. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know because like there's so many like kind of weird people. Yeah. Uh uh in there. Um oh my god. I don't know why I'm forgetting the brother's name uh from the uh, after party. Jo- For- ben Schwartz? No. Sam Robin. Richardson? Yeah, Sam Richardson. Oh yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, I I it would be fun. Yeah. I don't know, you know. I like would that get to too hokey? No, no, he's good. He he can yeah. play he can play a bunch of different levels. And I think shout out to him because I think he just recently won an Emmy for Ted Lasso. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He's he's man. He's such a nice guy too. Um, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. Um, yeah. For me, I'd be like, 
it'd be interesting to see him play off someone who's like really crazy like almost weirder than him the way that like Dale Craig plays it mm-hmm. like a Werner Herzog who does like weird random trail uh you know cameos mm-hmm. and he's got that thick German accent and shit and just looks creepy as fuck um <laughs> but I mean I trust uh, I trust Ryan Johnson with these films they're so entertaining they're so much better than the kind of Brana shit that he puts together um so I trust anything but who would be ooh because you know he always does the the female even though I think he'll probably switch it on this one he does like the female like uh protagonist that supports him and mm-hmm. his mysteries i don't think they'll follow that same formula again though but um yubi just mentioned true a detective in the chat uh and she also mentioned mahersha ali would be interesting to put it oh he would be good yeah he i mean he's good in anything yeah she is like put put yeah put him in it put him and Pedro pascal in this movie you have a fucking huge hit and a great well acted murder mystery but true detective jody foster go a little bit older Solid actress. I'm with it. And then also you finally make that that protagonist the actual bad person. Oh, flip it, flip yeah, it on yeah, script. yeah, yeah. I hope I didn't just spoil this for myself because I could see him flipping the script finally. Yeah, like... Because there's clearly a formula to the first yeah, two. Yeah, there, there's the, the person who's yeah. helping him is actually the person who's actually yeah. behind it trying to yeah. throw him off. Because I always thought that from the first one. At the beginning, you know, when he first meets Ana de Armas mm. and he looks at her shoe with the blood, I always thought that he, like, peeped that maybe she had a thing to do with it. Hmm. But, it, you know, ended up, obviously, she, like, knew that he killed himself and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, looking forward to seeing the developments for Knives Out 3. Always a great, great time. Uh, I like seeing them in the theater. I hope they get to you. Netflix is very much against the theatrical release. But I hope yeah. they do, again, like, the two-week window where they release Knives Out Glass Onion. Because that was a lot of fun watching it with an audience and stuff. Um in other news, Lionsgate just announced that it will open its fourth uh, Las Vegas attraction later this year, the John Wick Experience, in its association with 8711. We need to go. <laughs> like, like what, what is that going to be? I don't like being around guns, but, dude, if this place has – apparently each guest will be tasked with specific missions, playing out in unique ways with characters, mythology, iconogra- iconograph – iconogra- iconography – from the Wick universe, I just had a I just had a mini stroke right there. Um, the adventures entail rubbing elbows with continental staffs, assassins, crime bosses, or other curious guests like themselves within the relative safety of the continental. Dude, we need to go to this, and we can afford to go. We need to Is go to Vegas. This. We need to try to go to this. It's going to be amazing. My favorite thing about the John Wick movies are the is the world that they create, whether it's the Continental or just going through those different rooms with the tailor and the fucking. Because I don't like guns. But I for sure will spend an entire afternoon with a glass of whiskey or whatever the fuck going through like the armory and shit, you know, with the dudes like talking about dessert and he's mm. talking about knives and shit. Like I'll I'll do that all day. You know, you know what I thought about doing for a birthday this year? What? Doing like uh like renting out like a paintball place. Oh my god. But like an indoor paintball yeah, place, yeah. but not using paintballs, but using nerf guns. Okay. And like having like a, a huge like nerf gun fight with just like So you could have kids and stuff there too? No. Just adults. Oh, interesting. And okay. adult ner- a, a, an adult nerf uh just uh, less bruising. I get it. Yeah. So like, yeah. you know, so nobody you know gets hurt or anything like yeah. that. I do like the paintballs just because it raises the stakes. Because no does. one wants to get hurt. No one wants to get shot with a paintball. That shit sucks. Yes, it does. But nerf guns would be fun though. Yeah, I, but th- that's the thing. Yeah. It, it would just be fun. But I, I just it's just like Oh well, because you're gonna be running around and doing all sorts of crazy shit, and you're gonna get all sweaty, and it's like that's kind of that's it. Mm-hmm. And it's like you have an hour, it's like an hour, and they're like, oh, then you have a pizza party. I'm just like, I don't want any of that. <laughs> I just want to play. <laughs> oh, who's making the pizza? No, that, that's what I'm saying. It, it, like it goes through the thing. It's like yeah, eight hundred bucks. Okay, and I'm just like ah, I don't know. But the, just... the, that vendor creates the pizza. I don't know. I hope that shit's outsourced because I don't. I'm, I'm I don't, not doing it. So I don't trust niggas exactly. that do yeah. pizza in house like that. Yeah, that, you that's... know that those you know those cooks ain't trying. Mm-hmm. Is it, uh, listen, I'm in New York. I ain't, like I, a, I, I ain't here for trash pizza. Yeah, it's like a Chuck E. Cheese where yeah. niggas. <laughs> Mm-mm. Trust me, there's not one kitchen in a Chuck E. Cheese across this god land that is decent. That's <laughs> that's not above a D level in regards to <laughs> health. <laughs> I mean, you have, I mean and kids shit. are making that, you know, teenagers. Oh, I don't even think so. I think it's like crazy as adults that like are just like bored into chaos. <laughs> like, I think it's, 
Dude, I don't think, you get, I think you're like the wildest of all the lunch ladies. It's just like, ah! <laughs> dude, I am like, I, I guarantee you, there's there's some Chuck E. Cheese kitchens that would fucking haunt your dreams. <laughs> they're fucking serving pizzas around animatronic mouse, like mice and shit. Okay, they're not, they're not gonna be. Mwah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, but you know, at the same time, I go to Costco and those pizzas are fucking amazing. I mean, it could be possible where they're already pre-made. They just pop them in the oven. Well, no, the uh, the Costco pizzas aren't pre-made. They make them there. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, because when uh when I did a show at Bell House and they had mm-hmm. pizzas, they had them pre-packaged and frozen. They just pop them in the oven real quick. Yeah, that's the, the, the that ain't right. It tastes pretty good though. Yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll that's be, why they were like twenty bucks. Decent, but... Yeah, they'll, they'll be decent, but then that's not. Good. No, that's what Chuck, Chuck E. Cheese is doing. Though. Yeah, yeah probably. They, probably. They're giving them like grade F cheese and shit. <laughs> You're actually eating plastic. <laughs> <That's> pretty good. <laughs> All right. Anyways, but uh, moving on with movie news. Hold on. Uh, UV asked in the chat, did they release the shows that are part of the John Wick universe? Yeah, the Continental. The Continental was on Peacock. Yeah, yeah. I haven't watched it yet just because Neither have I. I wasn't excited about Mel Gibson being in it. Yeah. Like, I'm very much like, if I see it, I see it. But, you know, if if I learn that it's important to watch it for, like, the ballerina or, the, like, whatever next thing they do with the John Wick mm. series, then I'll I'll give it a watch because I think it's only three episodes. But yeah, yeah I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, neither have I. Um moving on, uh Madam Webb at the time of this recording has just come out. And the Deco- Stark of Dakota Johnson said that the script went through drastic changes after she signed on, which means that that studio got her and then he's like, shit out. Yep. But because you know what it is? I think that she was one of those people too that probably her people were sold or they were told to so- sell her on this is at one point going to be tied with the MCU shit. Yeah. I think they got all these people hooked and like gave them the impression that you're going to be part of that Robert Downey Jr. That gravy train. It's all going to be good. And from the trailer releasing Dakota Johnson has been like, Oh no, she, she admitted in an interview recently. She hasn't even seen the movie and she was at the premiere. So I mean, she did the red carpet and just went in her car and drove away, <laughs> which is what a lot of these stars do. Um, but yeah, like that that movie the movie's apparently terrible. Eventually we will review it. Yeah, but, um, yeah it, it's been getting just beat up. It's but I'm not surprised that the script went under went a lot of changes. I heard the everyone's been uh the director's been disputing this, but I heard initially it was like supposed to be set in the nineties and shit. Um, but now it's just two thousand three for some weird specific reason. So I heard that um one of the ideas behind it was that uh, there's a villain that goes back into the past and they're trying to kill Spider-Man before he's actually born to kill Spider-Man's mom. So he's never born. And like, that's interesting. That's at least interesting, but obviously that didn't happen. Then there was a whole thing. like, this may, uh, Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man, uh, maybe in this, uh, universe, maybe a part of this film. Obviously, that's not yeah. This is a standalone film. Yeah, apparently. it's just a just another weird fucking thing. Yeah, but I plan on going this tangent um, when we actually watch Madame Web. But I want to say that uh, between her and I found out Emma Roberts is also in uh, Madame Web. Those two are the be- biggest examples of the nepo baby, like talentless nepo baby thing to me. Because mm-hmm. I think that Coda Johnson's been stuffed like fucking forced down our throats as audiences ever since Social Network, where they had the close up on her ass when she's in that scene with Justin Timberlake. I'm like, first of all, there's no ass there. Don't don't fucking try to. David Fincher, you're great at shooting films. Don't try to fucking fool me there. And then I think she's just terrible. She's low energy and everything. She never seems like she wants to be there. And this whole press run, she's been very like, eh. So well, th- believe me, man. From the, the shit I've been hearing, yeah, she, she's even worse in this one because they're just like she oh, does yeah. not want to. She's like she is just monotone, just like not giving a fuck. She probably didn't want to do it. Her people forced her to. She fucking uh, she dropped her agent as soon as the trailer came out. And she was like, a, it was like yeah. a meme and shit. Yeah. So it, whatever. But also Emma Roberts, I think is also not good in anything. I know she does a lot of those Ryan Murphy shows, but. I don't know. I thought she was terrible in Scream 4, even though like some people love her performance. I, I don't know, man. But um, I will tell you casting that I am excited for, uh, even though it's uh, not as diverse as I was hoping for. They have Fantastic Four cast has officially been revealed for the upcoming Marvel film. Pedro Pascal, Vanessa Kirby, Iban Moss Bachrock, and Joseph Quinn have officially been uh, confirmed as Marvel's first family. This film's going to be directed uh, by Matt uh, Scammon, who did WandaVision, mm. which is still one of the best uh, Disney Plus original shows that they did. Depending who you ask. True, true. <laughs> um, it's scheduled for uh, 
July 25th, uh, 2025. So a little over a year and a half from now. And uh, it's going to be taking place in the 60s based on the, the art work specifically, I think, 1963. So there's a lot of speculation about what that means and everything. But at least we finally have a cast. Yeah. This has been the rumored cast lineup for a while. I would say for the yeah, past three yeah, months or so. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's Kirby's always been in the main person, like consistent person, I'd say. Uh mentioned it's like her and Margot Robbie, but um, you know, I'm I'm excited for this cast. I think uh I think this is a very, you know, Pedro Pascal, he's fucking everywhere. Yeah. Vanessa Kirby, really solid actress, even in dog shit movies like Napoleon that she does. Um, Ebon is hot off the fucking bear. He's great in everything. He's a great character actor. So him is the thing. I'm really excited about that. And Joseph Quinn, talk about a kid that did one season of Stranger Things. Spoiler, everybody. He dies at the fucking end of the thing, which is probably the best thing that ever happened to him because now he's in a quiet place day one. Mm -hmm. He's lead there. And now he's going to be a fucking Johnny Storm. I mean, his agents are fucking, they deserve an award for that. Good for him. Yeah, so um, definitely looking forward to this. Hopefully this uh, jokes, you know. He's, uh, he's 30 years old. Yeah, he's yeah, he's got a career. Hopefully, this uh does a little jolt into the MCU. I think between the Deadpool trailer, which we'll talk about a few, um, hopefully this puts everything back on track. Although I am a little bit worried about, um, like I mentioned, the lack of diversity that's happening right now. Um, yeah, I mean, but I think Kevin Feige will figure it out. Um, now that he has more control than he did a few years ago, because it takes years for this shit to reset. Um, but we'll we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. You know, uh some additional breaking news that uh, wasn't on a document that we prepared for this, uh, oh, this, this episode, but hit me. Ridley Scott is uh, confirms to direct Paramount's Bee Gees film. Uh, there's going to be a biopic <laughs> dude. I'm, I'm, I mean, I really Scott, he, that's the thing is I'm, if he's directing this, I'm not going to expect the Oscar caliber film mm. now, but I am going to expect it to be entertaining. And if he gets Jared Leto to play one of the Gibbs, this is going to be fucking nuts. Yeah. Because ever since House of Gucci, man, and that movie is fucking nuts to high heaven. But I know he's going to entertain the fuck out of me with this. And yeah. I love the Bee Gees. I grew up on the Bee Gees. So I'm excited for this. The cast you and grew group. up on the Bee Gees? How I old are you? About <laughs> this. I thought to you about this. My nana used to play Bee Gees and Motown Records for me. Um, but I, I'm, I'm interested because that is going to be kind of tough. Those are tough roles because of the yeah. thing in general. Yeah. Um, and then you also got to play like the height of disco, and then the fall of disco, and how they reconcile with that. And yeah, it's gonna be. Well, a lot. I mean, it depends how how far in they're That's going true. into it. Yeah. Yeah. You because know, then like they don't want to die of cancer. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. One, another one uh, died recently. Uh, one of the brothers died. I don't know. Yeah, because only one of them's still alive. Yeah. Yeah, Barry Gibbs is the only one alive now. Yeah. But um, what if I, I just hope they don't do like there's no way Jimmy Fallon would get in this. He no, might have a cameo no, or something, though. No, no, he can't. That, that, that would be weird. That that. Would what if weird. Justin Timberlake, though? Because, you know, they do the Gibbs thing on SNL. Yeah, I, I still don't. That, yeah, I think that would yeah. be too much. But um, one last thing, speaking of movie uh, biopics, an official picture of uh, Michael Jackson's uh, nephew, Jafar Jackson, as Michael in the Anton Fuqua biopic has uh, been released. And I got to say, he looks very similar. And Miles Teller just, uh, was recently cast as his lawyer in it. Mm. So that means they're going into some kind of criminal charges thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is interesting because I would think with the Jackson family involved, they wouldn't go that route. But that's actually smart because that's a way to, st- that's a way to stick them apart from all the other biopics that touch on subje- uh, touchy subjects. Not saying like a Whitney or a Biggie or anything like that, or as controversial as Michael's history. Yeah. But that's a complaint we've always had with those biopics. It's like, they didn't go enough into, like, the dark parts of this person. Like, even with uh, Straight Outta Compton, we're like, Dre did some fucked up shit. They all did some fucked up shit. Uh, do, you, do you honestly think they're going to go into the dark stuff? I don't think so, honestly. I think that they have to touch on it in some way. And I think Anton Fuquan knows that. Now, how they do that, how they symbolize that, that's up to the creative team, but they have to, it'd be, that's like one of those egregious, like you could not avoid that. Yeah. It, it'd be like, Hey, 
we're we're drafting up the R. Kelly story, and it was like, yeah, he never went to prison. Yeah. Or like, you know, <laughs> he's never married to a Leah. What are you talking about? That's the thing with Michael is that he's such a complicated person, such a complicated figure in in history, like in pop culture and everything. That it would be, especially if you're not going to talk about the allegations, then you can't even do the whole like his you know discoloration of the skin and like. The weird stuff with the kids, like you couldn't, even, you shouldn't even touch that if you're not even going to do it. Yeah, you just punch, you just talk about the making a thriller. That's it. Unless or something like that. Un, no, no, you, you can't even do it. Like years, years after, like you know, like you know, Elvis, he's been dead for almost fifty, well, fifty years or something like that at mm. this point. And it's like them making a film. I'm like, yeah, they can just omit stuff. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You can't even do that with Michael Jackson because if you go back and look up pictures of Michael Jackson, you'd be like. Wait, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah my, no way around it. Our God kids had the exact same reaction when they saw like old music videos of Michael Jackson because mm -hmm. Isaiah was really big into like old like Usher stuff, and she was like, "Oh, well, you know, he's influenced by Michael Jackson." And then we went down a rabbit hole with those videos, mm -hmm. and he's like, "What happened to him?" Yeah. So even young people know, like, what? <laughs> wait, wait. This, yep. <laughs> yeah, they're very confused. You yeah. be in the chat. Our producer is asking that they say what the movie was going to be rated. I don't think so, but it probably is going to be PG-13 just for the com uh, commercial appeal because of that catalog alone. You want to make sure young people and families are able to go see. So this is the thing. Because this movie is being made by the family, I don't think that we're going to get the movie that that we all want and deserve. That's the, that's the issue. Because we've seen time and time and yeah. time again, anytime the estate has has the final say yeah they're yeah. they're not gonna they're not gonna you know let the true story come out or or just touch on anything that's sensitive now you also got to put in the fact is you know you know there's jehovah jehovah's witness and and things like that so it's like how is that also going to shine the light on jehovah's witness uh you know as an organization church and things like that so like i i i'm not I, I'm not too excited about it because I I can just see this being a disappointment. Mm. Yeah. I, I hope mean, not, but like, yeah. There's definitely some high expectations on it for sure. For sure. So we'll see how that pans out. Um, but yeah, that's our Hollywood movie news. And folks, if you if you see any news stories that pop up that you think we should cover on these mini episodes, email us at mediumpod at gmail.com. Once again, that's mediumpod at gmail.com. Or you can leave us a voicemail, 347-508-0978. You can ask us questions about any movie news or rumors you've heard on your end uh, and get our takes on it. So I mm -hmm. uh, just want to pass that along before we get into movie trailer reactions. And uh, first up, there was a lot of trailers that came out recently. Um both during the Super Bowl and before that and after that. Uh, first up, we got to talk about Roadhouse, the Jake Gyllenhaal remake of our favorite uh, oh, yeah. 80s insane action movie that's uh, also starring Conor McGregor and directed by D Doug Lyman, who did um, the first Jason Bourne film. To me, it looks a lot of fun. He's a UFC fighter now. It seems like he's down in Florida instead of in Texas, wherever the first yeah. one took place. Because, I mean, why would he not be down in yeah. Florida? My only thing is I'm looking forward to seeing who the character, like, who plays this character. Like, it looks like a lot of fun. It looks like a good modern remake. I think because it's on a streamer, I don't think it's going to dilute the 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 classic uh, reverence that we have for the Patrick Swayze original, mm. the way that I was worried it might. Um, but who do you think is going to play the Sam Elliott-like character? Because they didn't hint at that in the trailer. And after the trailer, I was like, oh, shit, who's going to play that character? His old mentor. Oh, that's I, I don't think that, I don't think there's going to be that character. I hope that they, they have a surprise up their sleeve for that. I think that'd be hilarious if it's a cameo we're not expecting. What do you mean, mijo? It'd be great if it was <laughs> Sam Elliott. I mean, that would be amazing. <laughs> that'd be so fucking crazy. That, that would be this crazy. This person also has to fight, though. So it's also yeah. like, well, who could it be? It wouldn't be Dwayne Johnson. That'd just be insane. No, 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 no. It, but it could be a wrestler or somebody. What about Batista? No, no, no. It, it would have to be. A, it would have to be like a Mark. Don't say Mark Wahlberg. No, no. I, I said martial artist. I was going to say martial artist, but like, I mean, John Cena would be crazy. Uh, actually, what if it's Dolph Lundgren? Oh, I think okay. that because Dolph Lundgren is a legit martial artist. Yeah, yeah. Like that would be great. Or Sly Stone. It was an MGM movie. Before Actually, it got acquired by Amazon. I know it's not gonna happen, 
but uh, Michael Ja White. Oh, uh, no, that, that's not going to happen. Either. I know it's not going to yeah. happen. But, like, I think he could be, but I think that if they gave us Dolph Lundgren, they'd be fucking cooking. They'd be fucking cooking. Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting one. Uh, because you yeah. also got to put in the fact is, like, Dolph Lundgren, you know, martial arts, right? Then you also put in the fact is that Dolph Lundgren is, like, you know, you know, Swedish and shit like that. Like, like different kinds of martial arts are big in some of the re- uh, regions. Like, they have, you know... Di- um, Oh my God, I, I don't know why I'm blanking on it, but there's a certain kind of uh, like kickboxing mm-hmm. that comes from certain areas, okay. things like that. So like it would it would fit, it would fit fit in just his look and everything like yeah. that. Also his age, and, and then technically, like technically, um, fucking why am I forgetting the uh, what, the Patrick Swayze character? What's his name? Dalton. Yeah, Dalton is playing. It, 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 I mean, Dolph Lundgren is the real life uh, Dalton. Okay, because he's literally a, a rocket scientist. Mm. Like he's like and like just like everything that Jack Dalton, uh, D- Dalton was, yeah. Dolph Lundgren actually is in real life. So that, that could definitely be a possibility. I can I can see that just because it's not because it's a streamer and stuff. Like they wouldn't they wouldn't have something really really big if it's just going straight to streaming. Yeah. So that's that's not bad. That's not a bad guess. Um, okay. Uh, so Roadhouse, I'm interested in seeing it. I think it's going to be a fun movie. We're going to obviously review it, folks. And we actually might be seeing the premiere at South by Southwest. Oh, indeed we are. Um, cause folks, we are going to Texas, which is why you should definitely consider subscribing to Patreon at patreon.com slash medium popcorn. Every little bit helps the show and helps us support our travels and, uh, future coverage. Cause we're hitting the road, going to Texas and trying to go to some other film festivals this year. Hopefully we'll go back to Toronto later in the summer. So Please, please sign up for patreon.com slash media popcorn. And if you're a former patriot, please come back. You can even do a free trial, try us out again, see if you like it. Uh, we've had a lot of really great stuff on there. So again, patreon.com slash media popcorn. All right. Next trailer is Monkey Man, which is written and directed by Deb Patel and starring Deb Patel mm-hmm. in essentially the Indian John Wick, but with like, you know, uh, some sense of humor, a little bit of like a, meta humor so to speak like it's like hey we know this is an action movie but also like you know he tries to jump through a window crashes into it he can't break it because he's a scrawny dude um but it seems really interesting it seems like a revenge film what did you think yeah. of it? um i didn't know what to expect you know w- you know with this uh film um but i'm in yeah i'm in jordan peele must have liked it so much because initially i think it was going to be a streamer or I don't even know if he had distribution and Jordan Peele incorporated his whole deal with universal monkey Paul And was like, we're, we're going to release this shit. Yeah. And it's also cool. Cause Deb Patel, you would not think that he's in a movie like this. Yeah. That guy's a solid actor. He's done, he's done some, he's been in some movies that were terrible, but he's always been really solid. Yeah. So I'm excited to see this too. I, I, I think it's, it's going to be cool. <laughs> what if they made, what if this was like his uh, fucking audition for James Bond? Because they always, because, and I get it. I get it. It's probably never going to be a brown person, person of color who yeah. plays that role. But he is British and he's fairly young. And if he can show up some good physicality in this movie and impress audiences and it makes a decent amount of money, I can see them being like, huh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. At least give him two films. We'll see. That's just wishful thinking, folks. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I doubt that's going to be the case. But I, I mean, like you know, you, you you could wish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, speaking of British people that uh, should have been James Bond but weren't, Idris Elba has a Knuckles TV show coming out. Yeah, which I did not see uh, coming. I think I heard rumblings of it, but I didn't know they actually did the thing. Um, and it's going to be on Paramount Plus. And this trailer is to Nuck to your buck. Now I'll be the first one to say I love the Knuckles character. I actually dressed up as Knuckles when I was a kid for Halloween. Like, that's how much I love Knuckles the Echidna. You would, you would. Fucking Knuckles Chaotix, 32X, Sega. Fuck with me if you know what I'm talking about. Um, this trailer, I have to admit, though, it's I'm I'm old, I'm too old for it. Yeah. I thought it was, I, I got it. I got what I was going for. But I realized with this Sonic series particularly, I'm a grown-ass man. I don't have kids. So I'm going to watch it. It looks like it could possibly be fun for me. But this is strictly for kids. This is clearly for kids. Yeah. I just think that, like, Idris being so serious is crazy. 
Like with that accent, and then he's knuckles and kind of talking about war. He's trying to fight dogs and shit. <laughs> like he he's playing knuckles so crazy, which is not the way I envision knuckles, but it's a unique take on the character. Uh, we- well, I mean, it's also uh, a extremely uh, comedic uh, take. Yes, uh, on yeah. the character, which I think is fun. It's it's a good angle to go. Yeah, it's a good angle to go because tails they kind of playing it straight, where he's just the uh, the wingman, literally. And Knuckles is like now this unhinged nigga that's like, I have to fight to save this planet, but I'm also gonna fight everybody, including myself. <laughs> like, well, no, he's it's he's just just a fish out of water. Yeah, he's in the like. Uh, I mean, it, he's basically a soldier without a war. Mm, that's he's good. A, so, yeah, he's a soldier without a war, and it's just like, well, if I'm not fighting, what am I supposed to be yeah. doing? Well, he's gonna be fighting Kid Cudi apparently in this movie. Yeah, in this which show. Is wild. Yeah. Which feels like a movie that's just broken up into different episodes, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's how it feels. Yeah, sure. But we'll see how it ties into Sonic Three because I am excited for Sonic Three with Shadow coming. Mm-hmm. Um, the, I always thought that was an interesting character and stuff. Yeah. So we'll see where this goes. Um, they got the whole fucking cast to do it, so you know, we'll, we'll I think see. it's going to be hilarious. Yeah. Um, next up, we have Twisters, which is the sequel or maybe requel. I don't know what exactly. I have a feeling that young lady is going to be Helen Hunt and uh, Bill Paxton's daughter. They didn't say it in the trailer, but I have a mm-hmm. feeling that's going to be because they use similar technology now. Um, and it seems like they're using technology to try to dissipate a twister, a tornado. Yeah. Which is interesting because they had that scene with the truck slamming down to the ground. The, the, the tornado is coming. I'm like, I do remember the first time seeing the trailer for Twister and going to the movie to see Twister. Yeah. I saw that movie mad times in the theater, and Yubi, we should definitely add to the list because I haven't seen it in a long time. Hmm. But I remember that being blown away by that movie. Literally. We haven't done Twister. We haven't done Twister, bro. Or did we? I think we did. We did? Maybe. I'm pretty sure we did. Okay. It's possible. We should... Folks, we just realized that we're like up to 800 episodes on this yeah. podcast. <laughs> Literally, like Yubi earlier today was like, you guys have done like 800 episodes of this podcast, including Patreon. I'm like... Oh, mama. <laughs> yeah, you watch like, 800 plus movies. Yeah. And mind you, folks, we celebrated episode like 400, like two, three years ago. So we're way off track in celebrating those milestones. So yeah. you're going to have to bear with us so we can yeah. celebrate a big one. We'll, we'll get you, back to you when we hit a thousand. You'll be in the chat said we have done Twister. So yeah. that means that the reviews on Patreon probably in the paywall um, for the archives. But um, what did you think of the t- Twister's trailer? Oh, it stars Glenn Powell, too. Yeah. I, He's I, blowing I, the fuck up. Bro. Holy shit. You know what? And that's the that's the first thing. Like once I saw him pop up on screen, I was like, you know what? I understand why they're putting him in everything. He has the look, the feel, the face, the smile of somebody that you want to see on screen. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He personifies an actor. He personifies, you know, like a movie. You know, the, the, yeah, the the hero. Mm, like yeah, yeah. like that's that's who that guy is and like i'm here for it and i'm, I'm told like nothing against him i think that he's actually he does well with those roles and like there's nothing i was just like oh he fucking sucks yeah. um so i'm I, i'm i'm fine with it i mean it seems uh interesting it also i know it's going to be a little bit more updated yeah and you know so yeah there's twisters now plural so with that being said, you know, with it being updated, that's what worries me about it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because now we're going to use modern technology, da 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 you know, stuff like that. So I'm like, eh, okay. Well, I think there's a potential for it to still, like, be, pay a lot of homage to the original mm. while also being able to do its own thing. You know, Anthony Ramos is also in this. Because if people are still doing this shit, like, you know, studying tornadoes and shit you gotta be fucking nuts oh yeah you gotta be out of here so that means that we're gonna see some really interesting characters yeah. especially in 2023 if you're doing this shit there's no way that you're not going home niggas are like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> like somebody was like hey um have you ever heard of, of computer like at least in the <laughs> 90s like you know when twister came out it was kind of like hey man like you're you, you're hella smart because i wouldn't i wouldn't think to be able to do stuff like this now it's like okay i get you're smart you don't have to go to the thing. <laughs> so uh, look at yeah. that from afar. <laughs> what are you doing? I think it'll, I think we'll probably do well. And also the director is the director who did Minari. So talk about a come up doing a small indie film. that got a lot of awards recognition. And now you're doing a hundred plus million dollar movie. Okay. All right. Yeah. We'll definitely be reviewing this um, in the future. 
I'm going to jump around a little bit. We did get a look at Wicked Part 1, uh, this famous musical that's uh, been a huge Broadway juggernaut is being split into two films starring uh, Cynthia Erivo and Ariana Grande in the, in the, uh, the main uh, roles. Um, I never saw the musical. I did. What did it's you phenomenal. think? It's great? Yeah. I've heard good uh, no, things. And Wicked, if you liked it, holy no, shit. No, it Wicked was uh, was really, really good. So do you think the movie... I've heard the 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 big screen that they had, CinemaCon, like the the people were like, this looks fucking beautiful. Oh, I I, I imagine. Listen, when I saw I saw it when I saw it on Broadway, I was just like, oh, this is probably one of the, you know, the best things, the best decisions I've ever made to go. Oh, and shit. watch this. OK. And like um, I forgot who was uh, who was doing it. It wasn't. Uh, Cynthia uh, Revo. Um or uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Adina Mazzel. Yeah, she she wasn't she wasn't on uh, that one that I saw. She I, she had left. So Got it was, it. Uh, but like, yeah, I was floored by okay. how, how great the story is. Um, I don't know how great it's going to be being adapted, you know, into film in the two parts too. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it it's, it's going to be tough. Yeah. It, it's going to be tough to watch. Um, I think. Yeah. It it's looks hard interesting. to say. It looks interesting, it does. but it also looks very CGI heavy, which makes sense. Um, I just hope we don't get another, uh, whatever the Oz movies that they did with James Franco, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. I, the Wicked Wicked musical, I know a lot of people are huge fans of it, so I'm sure it's going to make a bunch of money. I'm going to try to see the Broadway show before I see the movie adaptation. John Chu just recently did In the Heights is directing it, so at least he knows how to do a musical. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. I'm, I'm in... And you guys know I do not like... Uh, you do not like musicals. Exactly. Musicals on film, yeah. but I was a fan of In the Heights. Yes, yeah. So you know, yeah. Too bad no one saw it. <laughs> but yeah, I know. And, but and and then also on top of that, you know, I do love Wicked. So yeah. you know, this one actually has a shot with me. But okay. we'll see. Okay. Uh, one movie that I think will definitely have a shot with us is A Quiet Place Day One, yes, starring Lupita Nyong'o, Joseph Quinn, who we just recently talked about in Fantastic Four, um, and uh, Demon Humso. Mm-hmm. Amistad himself is in it. Um, Give us free. Which is crazy. Wasn't he in Quiet Place 2? Yeah. Oh, shit. So they're tying it all together. Well, yeah. I mean, the guy, um, the other guy from the Quiet Place 2 uh, that was that, that was basically secluded. I can't remember the actor's name. Julian Murphy. Yeah. yeah he's, he's in this as well. No, they just showed parts of the sequel, the first two. And the ramp up for the movie. Oh, did they? Yeah, and then oh, it went yeah. to day one. But Dim- D- Diamond Husu is like there in New York. So interesting. That's maybe he's going to probably be the bridge for both of these mm. stories. But I I knew about this movie. I knew Lupita Nyong'o had been cast. And I was like, thank God we finally got her in a fucking live action movie. Because yeah. she's always fine with some fucking CGI character. Um, Which, listen. Jesus she, she's 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 yeah, making nice yeah. bread Little, i know but yeah. still but she's a beautiful actress she's incredibly talented she needs to be in front of the camera um but i did not know this shit took place in new york so when they saw the clock wind down at day one and then it shot show new york i was like oh shit oh yeah those are much as well a feast oh yeah yeah i was like oh that's yeah i can see this movie taking place all in one day but at the same time when that uh you know all that, all that train, like all that monster has to do is be in the subway when a train goes by. I mean, that's what that's what's gonna be incredible. This movie might give me what I always wanted from World War Z, because mm-hmm. World War Z had like this epic, uh, these epic chapters that took place in New York where niggas were just getting taken out, like and it was like insane levels and carnage and shit. I'm like, oh, this could be a like incredibly violent, but also like one of the the coolest sci fi things I've ever seen. Yeah, but it's also going to probably be anxiety induced because, mind you, the first Quiet Place gave me all the anxiety. Yeah, and that was just with four people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this is a whole city. Like it's going to be insane. Yeah. When I saw this full trailer, I was like, "Oh, I'm I'm going to be there day one for this tri- this movie release." <sighs> what happened? No, no, I'm just, I'm just thinking about it. It's like I remember when we first watched uh, a Quiet Place, the first one. And like you know how floored we were, just the yeah. movie watching experience yeah. of it. Oh man, yeah. I'm I'm glad that they. I kind of wish that we had gotten this after the first one instead of Quiet Place Part Two, 
but I get the need to continue that story because there's more story to tell with that yeah. family. And the sequel was decent, like especially adding Cillian Murphy at the Love Smart, yeah, and everything like that. But I am interested to see a different perspective of this world, um, and especially in New York City because that could go a lot of different places. So. Yep. And also, they were upstate New York. Yep. And memory serves with John mm-hmm. Krasinski's family, so it kind of makes sense. Yeah. I'm I'm very into it. Um, I'm, something I'm not so into is the Godzilla versus Kong, the new empire trailer. This just looks like fucking stupid, goofy shit. I don't, I don't, what do you think? What did you think of this? All right. They're fighting a big red uh, monkey. That's the villain. It, it, it seems like there's a war coming. It, it's just like, I, I, I don't get, it. I don't, I like, this is one of time. Oh, I'm sorry. This is one time, like, you know, the trailer, I feel like it didn't give us, Enough, well, it didn't give us enough. It didn't give us anything. It was like, all right, you just gave us some visuals, but what the fuck is actually going on? Yeah. You know, which is kind of good because you don't want to give too much in the trailer. But um, yeah, it's just going to be lasers blasting, explosions. Yeah. And just, you know, just weird shit. I mean, they created a fucking, you know, uh, you know, a fucking like an uh, arm. Yeah, thing. for Kong. Yeah, for Kong, like that's weird. Okay. Yeah, how'd you even get that thing on it? Yeah, on him? and it was Kong was just like, yeah, 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 come on, yeah, make me a glove. Like what? <laughs> make me a metal glove, niggas. Like come on now. It, it looks so stupid. Yeah. I've heard Monarch is decent, like a good, like a Godzilla show and stuff. Mm. But after Godzilla minus one, I'm like, this looks terrible. Well, yeah, because Godzilla minus one was so fucking awesome. Yeah, like, and it was made for thirty mil. So I just. Uh, which is hilarious because it might actually win visual effects of the Oscars. Yeah. Which is going to be such a slap in the face to all those 200 plus million dollar special effects movies and shit. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but to be look, fair, they also exploit their, their people in those countries sometimes. Hey, yeah. no, about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of expectations, uh, a show that I used to watch as a kid has recently been rebooted and I have no expectations of how it's going to go. X Men ninety seven mm-hmm. is coming to the MCU. I guess those are going to be. Is that part of MCU canon now? What's happening? I at least in that universe, maybe that uh, what's her name and Miss in the Marvels ended up in. Is that what they're saying? I I, I'm I don't so know. confused. So there's a lot of different things being thrown out there, but my understand there's a theory that when the X Men come in it's going to be the 97 X-Men that that are going to be infused into the Marvel universe, into the MCUs, into the MCU. Do you know how... I mean, the cartoon, the trailer looks interesting. I love the throwback animation. I love, like, the, the marketing materials I've seen and stuff like that. It looks cool. And then, you know, uh, Magneto getting all of Charles's uh, mm-hmm. things and his will at the end. I'm into it. But do you know how much horror that is for the non comic book fan now? Well, between the Netflix shows no, that are no, now, no, no, no. some of the Netflix Brandon, shows are now canon. And Brandon, now, what? No, it's even worse than that. Because if you know anything about the 97, that, that's this X Men series, it was actually, um, it, it wasn't chronological. A lot of it wasn't chronological. Mm, yep, yep. You were getting episodes in all different. Yeah, I used random, to bounce around. Yeah, I, I used, I used around. to like think I was going crazy. So, and, and the reason was because it was something with, um, you know, the the rights or something like that. The, the whatever deal they had, yeah, they just couldn't get things on the right schedule. So the whole there's there's literally I, I watched a documentary about that this series and yeah. how much of a mess it was. So how do they clean up all of that? I don't know. I think that the only thing that could save this right now with the MCU is to have Michael Pena literally do something at the beginning of like one of the Avengers movies now, like breaking down everything that's happened since Endgame. I mean, that would be hilarious. It would be hilarious. Or at least release it on everything, like all like your YouTube channels, social mm-hmm. media, put it before movies now and shit. Like just have him for five minutes break down everything. I said that'd be really fucking funny. Yeah, fans would love it. Like they love that guy. I don't know what happened between Marvel and Michael Pena, why he wasn't an Ant Man Quantum Mania. Uh, but uh, wasn't he was he in something else around that no, time? No. Well, no, he's been kind of laying low, I think. Mm. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. But I'm just like 
I don't know what's going on, man. Yeah. Um, but I do know that Marvel at least has one big hit on its hands with Deadpool and Wolverine, which as of this recording has uh, surpassed the numbers for the highest watched, uh, the most watched trailer of all time. Yeah. I think it was like 390 something million. And we, mind you, we don't even get a full glimpse of Hugh Jadman as Wolverine. We just get shadows, points. which I think was brilliant. Yep. And well, because you know he's also wearing the the yellow and black. Yeah, yeah, black and yellow, black and yellow. But also, I mean, I love that the trailer from the beginning was like, yeah. So we're part of Marvel now, but it's not gonna be watered down. I'm still. They have a pegging joke the first thirty seconds. Yeah, which is hilarious. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he then, closed the doors. Guys, yeah, <laughs> you passed your. He's like, you shit yourself when you were uh, passed out. He's like, I wasn't passed out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I actually. I'm I'm way more excited for this than I was for Deadpool two. Oh, I think it's going to be way better than Deadpool two. Yeah. Um, and I think that he's, I, I just see little slips in the in the trailer, but I think he might be working as like a salesman or some short shit at the beginning of the movie with that wig on, because I see him with like a name tag and shit at the beginning, mm-hmm. like in one of the scenes. Yeah. I'm like, is this dude just like laying low, like <laughs> working like some shitty job and shit? Yeah. It's like, oh, which would be know. hilarious. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm the looking, wig is wild. Yeah, I'm yeah, it's so crazy. Um, but yeah, you got Tom from a uh, uh, succession in here. Uh, you already have they they gave us one cameo, which I like. I was like, there's no way that's the dude. They got fucking Pyro from the original X Men movies from X Men 2 and X Men oh, 3. Really? Yeah, that the dude with the goggles who's mm-hmm. like, I love this part. That's yeah. the guy who played Pyro, which was one of my favorite characters in X Men 2 hmm. because they do this moment in X Men 2, which I not many people no one ever talks about, but it's when they go to Iceman's house. Remember, it's almost like when yep. you're coming out. I, like, I, I know exactly the coming out scene about a mutant and yeah. shit. And he uh I uh Pyro looks at a picture of Iceman and his family and they mm-hmm. look happy and stuff like he had a good childhood. And the quick it's a quick scene and he just looks at the you see his reflection looking at the the picture, and it's like clearly he did not have that kind of childhood. Yeah. It's very fast, and that's why he started blowing up the police cards and shit mm-hmm. as soon as like shit pops off. Um, and so to see that character coming back, man, I can't, I can't wait to see what, how they bring people back and how they, they merge all the shit. And they really, they really have an opportunity to fuck with everything. As long as they kind of don't dilute the impact of, I would say, in game, I'm all for it. Yeah. If you can correct some shit and bring some people into the fold and keep some people out, that's interesting to me. I'm surprised that Owen Wilson's not in this. He probably will be. I mean, it would probably I, be a quick like pass by scene where he's like, and maybe even with Loki, like he he and Loki walk by or some shit, like yeah, because they're at the TVA, so I can see that. Well, Loki's. Have you watched Loki? I haven't watched season two yet. Okay, I can't say anything. He runs it now, right? Spoiler alert. Uh, no, you you need okay. Yeah, okay. I, I almost said that's why I had to ask you. I was like, yeah, well, all right, yeah. But I mean, I'm I'm all. I mean, what's if you were able to convince Hugh Jackman to come back for one more time, I mean, I think it cost him his marriage, but you know, that's just me speculating, being mm-hmm. a gossip, you know, so but uh, yeah, I'm I'm into it. The only yeah. thing I was disappointed is that Zazie Beats isn't in it, but neither is Cable. So yeah, yeah. As long as that fucking annoying kid from the second one isn't in it, I'm good. What, what the the annoying kid, uh, like that he was supposed to protect in the second one. The Australian New Zealand oh, kid yeah, or whatever. Yeah, the fuck. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hated that kid. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Deadpool and Wolverine, even though apparently there's Hugh Jabman posted a, a Wolverine asshole. So they have a bunch of different titles that they've apparently copywritten mm. and shit. So there may not be a definitive title for this for quite some time, which is hilarious. It'll and, be fun. And like, like, yeah, yeah, like this, this is just going to be fun. Yeah. And, and that's what it seems like, and exactly. I think that's what we need. Exactly. Yeah. Now, uh, I saved this last one for last uh, for our last trailer to talk about because surprisingly, it's become. I mean, Dan, Doom Two. I've heard enough good things where I'm like, Dillis Van Noob. I've heard a lot of people are saying this is the best film ever, which you know, you and I are big fans. Hmm. We're the biggest fans of Dune, but I'm like into that. But Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, dude, this looks amazing, bro. And that guy is directing Zelda. So here's the thing. I love the Planet of the Apes uh, franchise. Mm-hmm. I think, like, I mean, Eve, just, just they've killed, they've killed it. So, yeah, I'm gonna be there. Yeah. I'm gonna be there for this one. Like, I, I, 
and, and like the, the trailer is I was just like, let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. One of my uh, buddies, I, uh, we were at yeah. Super Bowl. We were sitting there watching it, and, and he's just like, "Oh, he's ne- he never saw any of them." I looked at him like slow, like I'm like, "Wait, you've never seen?" I'm like, "God, bro, you, you yeah. like you're fucking up, right?" And now. they flipped it. They flipped it because now remember the first one was like the humans run the world, and then he finds this one smart ape, and then that's mm-hmm. when shit pops off. Now it's flipped. He finds like the uh, ape has found this one smart human. Yeah. And it's now gonna flip shit. And that king ape, whoever the fuck that dude is, it seems crazy. Yeah, and, well, I'm into that shit. And there's all you know, Caesar's long gone. Yeah, this is thousands of years in the yeah. future, I guess, yeah. or something. So I'm really into it. Uh, I think it's gonna be interesting seeing the apes speak in fluent English and the humans not really. Yeah. I'm like, this is gonna be wild. Mm-hmm. And just visually, when I saw this trailer, because when uh, the director of West Ball has been announced to be the director for uh, Nintendo's live action Zelda film, and so at first I was like. I don't know. That seems a bit premature. And I saw this trailer. I'm like, oh, he can make Hyrule look amazing. This is yeah. what he's doing. I'm mean, the cinematographer. Get the, yeah, they can do it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So um, that just shot out to my most anticipated film of the year. Yeah. Uh, once this came up, I was just like, this is yeah. Like 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 like, like this is just a yes. Yeah. Of, of, like. I, I can't speak enough how much <laughs> I, I I love the planet uh, yeah. this whole entire franchise. When they brought yeah. it back, was that um uh mid mid two thousands, late two thousands I think maybe when the first one uh, came out. It might have even been later than that. It might have been the two thousand tens, bro. I, I was just I yeah, was I, I mean, was so surprised. Yeah, Andy Circus is like a fucking. I, I I wonder if he's involved in these in any capacity because he as Caesar is like. One of the most underrated performances ever yeah. because he's CGI and he never got the accolades he deserved. Mm-hmm. But I mean, especially the second one. I re- recently watched the second one, dude. He's fu- when he's like the, trying to be the leader mm-hmm. and be fit. Fa- it's so good. It's so good. Yeah. It's uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to these. So, folks, that's a uh, we're back. We're back. We're doing movie news and trailer uh, reactions. Yeah, yeah. We had stopped doing them in respect for the strikes, but now that they're over and the dust is settled, we're back up and running. So, again, if there's any trailers, movie news, anything you think we should discuss, you can send it along at mediumpod at gmail.com or give us a voicemail at 347-508-0978. As always, you can follow me at Brutal underscore Black and all social media platforms, particularly threads and Instagram. That's where I'm at most of the days. And you can follow the show at Medium P Podcast and all social media platforms. Justin, how can people follow you as well as support the show financially, my brother? Guys, you can follow me at Jay Brown did it on the socials, but more importantly, you can follow this show support this show on patreon.com slash medium popcorn we have two dollar five dollar ten dollar and fifteen dollar packages yeah, yeah. there's so much content on patreon it's mm-hmm. absolutely nuts and you need to be a part of it so go to patreon.com slash medium popcorn and uh join up and uh idris will uh, bring you in and uh with all the pageantry that's right pageantry pageantry we're all going to dangentry all right, folks. Again, patreon.com. <laughs> patreon.com slash media popcorn. Support the show. Lord, they help us. And if you used to be a Patreon subscriber, come back. Baby, come back. Oh, mm-hmm. you can put it all on me. I was wrong because I couldn't live without you. Yep, those are not the words. All right, guys. Peace.